Welcome to the Agile community and our technical tips and tricks videos. My name is Sebastian Pariser, Director of Community and Senior Engineer. Today I will guide you through the process of how to refresh your device the OSC way. OSC means OS Creator. Basically, you might already have installed your Azure OS by factory ordering it or having some service providers making it for you or maybe having already ordered some UD pockets where the Azure OS is pre-installed. But in some cases, it might make sense to reinstall the whole system without just having an update rolled out. Basically, one of the main reasons are misconfigurations. Um, we have covered in other tutorial the fact that we have a boot menu and recovery menu, etc. But sometimes even that one is not enough to get your device booting up again. So misconfiguration is uh, one way I would see where custom partitions or specific scripts might already have completely broken the device, even if that's quite rare. Um, next step, defect hardware, especially if you have a look at some SSDs or on first generation, um, you might have some defective hardware. Uh, every disk has a specific amount of input and output of read and write cycles. So you might already have noticed that. In case of, you could use the OSC to get the good working sectors and uh, having the OSC installed there. During the pandemic, we had the situation that UD pockets needed to be delivered to a lot of different countries. But in the meantime, we gave you the ability to create your own UD Pocket by installing the OSC, so the Agile OS, on a USB stick of your, of your choice. And that's one approach that we have on the OSC. Then, clean up in case of move. If you move one device from one factory to another or from one company to another, you might want to be sure that all local data was erased. And that could be one approach. Direct migrations and life cycles are the others. Just to be clear, today we'll cover the local OSC way. So using the ISO file, we'll have upcoming tutorials regarding PXE appliance, SCCM, etc. But that's the first step. Usually we are starting with the universal management suite, also known as UMS, but not today. Today we will start with our web page, which is agile.com. On Azure.com, we have different sections. So if you are not comfortable by using the website or using the menu, which is this one, you can just type in downloads into the search function and you should now see the different branch of download sections. We are using the Workspace Edition, assuming we are still on OS 11. And now we have different features available. So let me just explain why and from which reason you might want to refresh your device. First of all, you might have a defective hardware. I mean, it can be a web, it can be a disk, it can be uh, your UD pocket where the storage is going down or whatever else reason. And you want to recover uh, the device as soon as possible without having the need to uh, rebuy a new one. So refreshing the device is definitely one of the first approaches I would consider. But in our case, never forget that all the settings are made in the UMS, or basically most of them, I guess. So you don't have to be extremely scared by refreshing a device. Usually all the user-made settings should be there too, even after the refresh. And the license, if you don't check something else, should stay there too. So like I said, assuming you're on OS 11, we have different ways to deploy our operating system on, on hardware. Since we are now covering the recover of a device, I'm not going through the OSC for Windows or the SCCM part, because as I'm assuming that the OS is already an actual OS device and you just want to reinstall it. So we are using basically the OS creator today, which was the UDC. Uh, version on OS 10 and OS 5. And we are downloading now the zip file which is containing all that we need. Just be clear, the firmware update is not meant to be used for refreshing the device. That's a purely update file, not a flashing file. So we really have to focus on the OSC underscore version you want to download. 
So we have to register. And my email address, which today will just be rewritten to something else. And a country, which is Germany. And yes, I have read the privacy policy. Yes, I accept everything that I'm seeing because I'm just clicking I accept and don't even read something. And last but not least, we should now get the download link. Here we go. So let's come back in a couple of seconds when the download is ended. The download process is coming to an end. Just in the meantime, let me show you one other approach which is called the OS Deployment Appliance. I will not go through that process in detail, but just keep in mind that you might already have a PXE appliance from us, which is meant by this one, this virtual machine, or maybe you own one on your network. If you are not sure, please ask your network or system guys. They are pretty well informed about how to use it if you didn't already. So it might also be a way to refresh a device if you are in the company network. Just wanted to share that one. So basically we have now our zip file, which is containing everything that we need for the refreshing process. Obviously we don't need the zip file itself in our case, but we need the content. So let's open the file and let's check what is in it. So we have the prepare stick. Don't be afraid, it's just a name. It doesn't have to be a USB stick that you want to use, even if that's one of the purposes of that file. So let's extract everything inside of a subfolder, which is called OSC. And let's check together what happened there. We already think that we have a big file, which is called uh, OSC version.iso. And that the file we will use today. But let's look into it. So we have a couple of executable files for Windows. Just ignore them. Um, the only one that you might want to use is the prepare stick, which will create a refresh USB stick that you can boot on any kind of hardware, in our case on the device you want to recover, and then make the conversion. But in the same time, I have to admit that we have a couple of reports that the prepare stick.x is not working everywhere because of security issues, sometimes because of patch levels of the Windows machine or whatever. So if you are not getting something like this and it's working, then you are good. If you're getting some .NET framework errors or some missing libraries, whatever, you can go to Rufus. So R-U-F-U-S, which is, in my opinion, way better than the prepare stick, but just my personal opinion. So we have now our extracted file. Like I said, the prepare stick is not the part of today. Um, I will focus on the ISO file because the ISO file is a file which would be extracted to the USB stick with the boot sequence, etc. So we'll just use that one. So I would use one of my devices, which I have in my virtual environment. So I have here an OS 11 device that I will now shut down and refresh. So in that case, I will just edit my virtual machine settings add a new ISO image. Obviously, if you have virtual box or VMware Fusion or whatever, it will work exactly the same way. So I'm just using the ISO file. And we want to have it connected at power on, obviously. So now let's see if we can boot from the ISO file. So let's go to power power on to firmware. Like I said, every hypervisor has this different pronunciation and terms. But in my case, I'm using the CD-ROM drive. And yes, that's what I wanted to see. So we have the Azure as creator. Um, the graphical user interface is definitely different from what you are seeing on an Azure S 11 device when you go into the boot menu. So you should definitely see that specific icon. Let's start in the standard installation and to wait now that the ISO file gets mounted and we can start the conversion process. So here 
you will also notice a small difference as soon as the desktop is starting. Um, even if the background might look exactly the same like you already have in your in your company, if you didn't change it through the firmware customization, that menu is unique. So we stay on English, waiting that the main feature set is starting. And now let's look into the menu that we have. So we have a start menu like on Azure OS 11. It's pretty much the same, but with less functions. But you can go into the about and check just which version of your Azure OS creator you're using. And if you can check also if the hardware is uh, recognized as expected. But like I said, we're already using that OS 11, so it's pretty sure that it's working. So we're not go through the legacy installation because it's not used that much. Um, even if on specific, I remember Dell hardware, uh, it makes sense to use that specific installation mode. But usually you're good by leaving it by default. You can check the features that you want to install or uninstall. Honestly, if you are not sure what to do, just leave everything. So don't even open that menu. If you want to do so, you can check now um, which components will be installed. So it's more or less the standard set that you have on every Agile OS device when it comes to boot process. The only thing I want to mention here is uh, if you would like to use it on a new hardware, you might have to downgrade the firmware size so uncheck specific features, but that will be part of another tutorial. Now go to the migrate all settings. In a recovery mode, I would definitely leave that one checked because you might have already uh, made settings locally, local user settings when it comes to the audio mixer, etc. So I would leave it this way. But if you had issues with the configuration that you made on the device that might have broken the device, then just remove that function and you can now start from scratch besides the licenses. So already here, if you had issues with your settings and maybe with some misconfigured uh, licenses, you can also deactivate that one. And now you are starting really like a new device. In my case, I want to keep my licenses, obviously, and the old settings are not needed that much on my side, but I prefer to keep them too. So let's start with the firmware process. I'm reading again everything in detail, not. And now I just have to confirm that the, everything on the device will be destroyed. I mean, not everything, but um, the partition that we are using. So now the installation process is starting. So it's creating the new partition table and installing the latest version. So during the installation process, why should you do that on a device that works and not and is not broken? It might make sense if you don't want to uh, keep specific steps in between if you're using an upgrade. Let's think about an OS 5 device that you want to upgrade to OS 11. In general, you have to fulfill some steps. So upgrade from version OS, uh, OS 5 to the latest 5, 5.13 version, then from there to specific 10 version from the 10, then to the 11th. If you already have OS 11 licenses in your licensing portal, so the licensing topic is not the biggest fear that you have, then you can just convert your OS 5 device directly to an OS 11 device. So let's reboot now. And we should see a fresh device now, um, I mean, from the installation procedure. So you see, every configuration that I made is still there. And now it's, all, it's applying my UMS settings, but it's already there from what I have made before. So my device is recovered and should work now. If that one is not working or if you don't have the ability to refresh the device, we'll have another tutorial where we'll explain the boot menu and which kind of recovery methods you have there. But in the meantime, we, we covered the topic of today. Thank you for joining our technical video session. All links mentioned in this session are available in the show notes section of this video. You will find more technical content and other videos on agilecommunity.com and agileacademy.learn.agile.com